Hi, this is Tim at Esri. In this video, we'll use geoprocessing tools to solve a spatial analysis problem. The problem is to find out how much of an invasive grass species, Nacella tussock, is near public campgrounds. Knowing which campgrounds are at risk can help us take action. I'm going to open a project from ArcGIS Online. It's called Use Geoprocessing Tools. Right there. Click OK. The project opens to the study area, the Marlboro region of New Zealand. The invasive grass is symbolized in a reddish purple color. Campgrounds are the white circles. You click the Analysis tab on the ribbon and the Tools button to open the geoprocessing pane. The first thing I want to do is create a buffer zone around each campground. That defines the area where we'll look for Nacella tussock. The buffer tool is a common tool, so it's right here on the Favorites tab. But if it weren't, I could search for it. And I'll click to open the tool. The input features are the commercial campgrounds. Let's give the output feature class a different name. We'll choose a buffer distance of 1.5 kilometers and run the tool. We get a message that the tool ran successfully and a new layer appears in the contents pane. Let's turn off the commercial campgrounds layer and zoom into the buffers. I'll click the layer symbol to open the symbology pane and pick a symbol that makes it easier to see Nacella tussock inside them, like this black outline. And we'll take a quick look at the layer attribute table the Campground Buffers layer copies the attributes of the commercial campgrounds and adds a couple of new ones. I'll close the table and zoom and pan around the map a little bit. We can see that some buffers contain the cella and others don't. And that's good information, of course, but we'd like to be more exact. Let's zoom back out to our bookmark. We can open the Select by Location tool directly from the ribbon. This tool allows us to select features that have certain kinds of spatial relationships to other features. In this case, I want to select buffers that contain the cella. The input features default to the campground buffers layer. That's because this layer is selected in the contents pane. The selecting features are the features in the Nacella tussock range layer. The relationship we want is intersection. This is going to select all buffers that have any nacella inside them or crossing their boundary. Click OK. Four features are selected on the map. Most geoprocessing tools create new data, but this one makes a selection on an existing layer. Let's zoom in to the selected features. Now that we know which buffer zones contain nacella, we want to know how much there is. To find out, I'll use a tool called Summarize Within. I'll open it from the analysis gallery on the ribbon where a lot of common tools are organized. The tool opens in the geoprocessing pane. The input polygons are the campground buffers. Only the four selected features will be analyzed. The input summary features are Nacella tussock. Those are the features we want to measure. We'll rename the output feature class and specify that the measurements are given in hectares, and run the tool. OK, let's look at the results. First, we'll switch back to the Map tab and clear the selection. We'll turn off the Campground Buffers layer. Tussock Within Buffers is our new summary layer. We'll click the Data tab and open its attribute table. We don't really need to see all these fields, so I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select some of them and hide them. You can always bring them back later. And here's the result. A couple of the campgrounds have a fair amount of nacella in their buffer zones, and a couple just have a little. The analysis results will look better if we present them in a bar chart. When you create a chart, an empty view opens along with the Chart Properties pane. 
as you set properties in the pane to chart view updates. On the Data tab, I'll set the category to Name so each campground has a data marker. The numeric value to chart is summarized area in hectares. Now I'll switch over to the General tab. Here we can change titles and descriptions. I'll change the chart title and press Enter to update the chart. And I'll change the axis titles in the same way. Let's float the chart to make it bigger. And let's float the pane too. And resize it. On the Series tab, in the Symbol column, you can pick a color for the data markers. On the Axes tab, the labels have a default character limit. I'll make that bigger so we can see the full campground names. And finally, I'll change the number formatting to show two decimal places instead of six. We can come back to the Data tab and label the bars with their values. They show two decimal places because of the number formatting we just did. I'll dock the Chart Properties pane and close the chart. You can reopen it whenever you want from the Contents pane. Finally, we'll look at the geoprocessing history, which keeps a record of the geoprocessing tools you run in the project. Click the Analysis tab and click History to open the pane. Here are the three different tools I ran. You can right-click a tool to get details about the operation. I'll save the project, and we're finished. To follow this workflow step-by-step -step with data, look for the Use Geoprocessing Tools tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro Help.